Jokers be hacking Zoom. I see. I be saying Jokers hacking Zoom so easily. All right, here we go. I'm about to open up with prayer, then we going to get started. Yeah. Uh, Make sure we did. Yeah, all right. Man, I am so, so, so sorry, guys. This is September 1st, 2020. Ran into mad technical difficulties tonight. Zoom was acting real crazy. I guess the circus was over busy. But um, as usual, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to see you yet another day. We thank you, God, for waking us up this morning. Oh, God, during these turbulent times, oh, God, we just ask you, God, that you will be present yourself as a comforter, as a keeper, and grant us peace, Father beyond measures in these trying times. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Amen. All right. So, man, like I said, guys, I'm so sorry. We got a super late start tonight, but the devil, he thought he won that one there, but we came <laughs> back with the upper cup. We figured it out. So we're going to make it happen. Tonight, I got my special guest as my right-hand man, my man G. Bell Hansford. This my this my boy. We go back. Um, I just want to make sure you're comfortable. I ain't got, I ain't, we ain't got no crew and no staff, but I got to make sure you got the water that you need, everything you need, it is provided, because you know where all the bodies is buried. <laughs> <laughs> I tell people, you you and Roddy probably the only two people I worried about writing a book about me. I don't know how <laughs> I would be betrayed. <laughs> no, nah, I, I ain't going to throw nobody up on live. <laughs> all right, good, good, good to know, good to know. And I know you're a man of your word, so if you say it, your word is your bond. All right, so... um. You know, just getting started, though, I want to give a special shout, birthday shout out to my cousin, Charles Bennett, whose birthday is today. Shout out, Big, Big C. Um, and, you know, I kind of wanted to start the show out because I, I kind of figured we talk about current events tonight, current events, current affair events tonight. But um, before we get into everything, I just wanted to send, a, you know, my, my special prayers out to Justin Blake, his children, him, himself his family, you know, the people in that area, the other victims that have been, that have been, you know, victimized. There was another murder up there. Uh, people that's just being assaulted by police brutality while the protests are going on. You know, my heartfelt prayers are with you guys, even though I'm not there physically, you know, know that we guys are praying for you and not just me and myself, but others all across this country. Like your, your prayers are with us. You're, you're not forgotten. Um, and we also, we, we, uh, we lost, uh, and an NBA player this week, Cliff Robinson, you know, shout out and prayers, to, you know, Cliff Robinson and his family. We also lo lost legendary coach Lou Olson. But, um, you know, we go, we, we go back and forth with the whole thing. You know, we could bounce around however you want to. But I do want to, I do want, I made sure I, I made it, a no wrote a note that I made sure I wanted to put this out there. Um, in, ter in terms of the, the next gentleman that I'm talking about, Know that he he was a consummate professional, you know what I mean. He 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 played he played he acted he portrayed the character of Jackie Robinson. He played he portrayed the character of uh, Thurgood Marshall. He portrayed the character of James Brown. And I'm not trying to be the one that just frame on everybody parade, you know, to tell your kids that Santa Claus don't exist. But Black Panther is a character. The child is a character. The young man's name is Chadwick Bozeman. So let's give him his proper respect. You know, we thank you for your professionalism. We thank you for all that you, you know, sharing your gift with us because your, your, your role that you played was legendary. But let, let, let's stop all this. Man, my heart broken because Black Panther died. Like, that's a character, man. <laughs> like, his name was Chadwick Bozeman, you know. So let's, let's play, let's pay, you know, let's pay him his proper homage. And, um, in the, in the last part of the tribute, um, I had posted yesterday. Like, the only reason I ever picked up a basketball in my life and really even the first time I ever even thought about college because I wasn't big on college. But the first time I ever thought about college was watching a game one Saturday and to see this dude on the sideline. Didn't know nothing about him, didn't know his name or nothing. But he just – it was just something about his presence on camera that commanded respect. It was like – Yo, if if playing basketball is the way for me to go that route and get the college to know this guy here, I want to do what all it all it takes so that I could. Now that didn't work out, 
But the man that I'm speaking of is, is John, Big John Thompson. Like this dude was monumental for the for the college basketball game, for for basketball in itself. But more importantly, and most importantly to me, in the lives of young men, that's gonna last forever. You know, so I, I want to send condolences and my prayers to his daughter Tiffany, his son Robbie, and as well as his son um, John Thomas III. You know, like it was it, this dude. You know, I'm gonna let you speak on the bell because you the basketball guy. But like I said, it, it was just it was just something about his presence, man. Like even when even when, even later on when he retired from coaching and he started doing like the uh, the broadcasting and all that yeah. shit, it was just like he was he was the epitome of straight no chaser to me. You know what I mean? He wasn't gonna beat around the bush. He didn't care about being politically correct. I'm quite sure he disliked, he had a disdain in, in his in his mouth for the word politically correctness because he he was gonna tell you 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 never any if you was in his circle, you was never gonna wonder where you stood at with him. You're gonna know exactly where Big John stood at, you know. You ask him a question, he's gonna tell you what he feels. Exactly, just like that there. And it was funny because I was look, I was thinking about you know some of the things that we're we're going up against now as far as systemic racism. And the protests and and just the chaos that the whole country is in at this time, you know. And I even got my towel here tonight for Big John. <laughs> oh, I got the you know, oh, I got the, got the towel for Big John. Like, <laughs> that's the only reason I got my towel tonight because I know he was he was he was a certain tie guy. Yeah, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's the way he travels. So I said I respect for Big John. I got to wear my towel tonight. And I got my towel to represent him. But you know, I was saying you know even with this system, systematic racism that we're up against now and people are trying to combat against. Like, dude, this dude was already doing this almost 40 years ago. You know what I'm saying? He protested and walked off the game. Bet. They, they asked him a question um, when he won the national championship in 1984. I mean, yeah. the they said, uh, uh, John, how does it feel to be the first black um, coach to win an NCAA title? He said, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't care. He said, what he said, I don't care about being a first. Don't ask me a question about being a first black coach. I don't care about being a first black coach or the first black anything. Only thing it means uh -huh. is a black man isn't intelligent enough to, you know, it took a black man since 1984 to be intelligent enough to win a, a championship in 1984. He was actually unapologetic in his speech. That's what I was saying. Like, don't ask him a question if you don't want the right answer for it. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and even, even the further on, on in that episode, I remember him saying, like, he didn't feel what people would consider as pressure because he took pride in that moment as well as it wasn't it wasn't a braggadocious thing, but he said because of that 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 monumental victory in 1984 when he became the first African American coach to win a major college championship, he said you know now this opens up the doors for fo for people to, to follow because for so many years they've been saying that we can't do this here we can't be leaders you know what I mean and I was I was watching it um. I believe it was Keyshawn Johnson. I was watching one of the interviews. You know, I've been I don't I've been, I've been trying to stay away from the news period lately between the RNC and the Democrats and Trump and Biden and all these. It's like I don't even want to watch the news and deaths and all this here. But when I got the, the alert on my phone that he had passed away, I kind of my my and a special, special, special prayers for our boy, my my dude, my guy, my favorite NBA player, because I always said it was magic. But I, as the older I get, I have to say hands down when I, when I think of it. Like AI would definitely be my favorite player. Oh, yeah. I know how AI big. Is, yeah, AI I know how big AI was. was in, he was in the AI life because you know everybody been playing the clip of the whole Hall of Fame speech when he like you know he thanks Coach Thomas for saving his life. Yeah, Not for yeah. scholarship, you yeah, know he said for saving yeah. my life. <laughs> yeah, you know I, I I forgot the town AI was in, but they want an AI head over there in Virginia. Yeah, had fucked up charges. I yeah, think, I think, um, it's a video out with, with, with AI's mother asking George, um, John Thompson to save my son's life. Yeah, he got to Georgetown and he and he got him, but he did that for a lot of players at Georgetown. That, exactly. I'm early '80s street dudes, Hoya jackets. I was young, but I but I saw it. Yeah, yeah. That's the number one jacket. I remember it, I, in one video, one game too. Um, I forgot who they were playing. Um, maybe Duke or some team, but they had they uh they had signs saying um 
hoods or you know, I mean, you know, some 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 yeah. great, you know, light slur in the in the, in the um in the stands. Mm -hmm. You know, I think after the first quarter, John Thompson went up to the ref said, if you don't remove that fan or um or or, or have him to take that sign down, we leaving. The ref Absolutely. went over there and took that sign down. See, he, he was he was he was more than a basketball coach. Much he, more. He, he was. This is 1984. What I, what I said earlier, what he said, it wasn't that. It's not many black men speaking like that today in sports on a major <laughs> platform. So that's not easy to do. This is 1984 yeah. now. Yeah. So him saying that, he gave a lot of pride to black men. Yeah. You know, allowing them to speak their voice. You know, mm -hmm. instead of giving like that. Um. Oh, you know, like he like. Well, yes, I'm. I'm. I'm very happy to be the first black. No, no, I'm gonna tell you the truth. This is how I feel. And, mm -hmm. I, and I don't really appreciate you asking me that question either. Yeah, because it's, because it's, it's offensive. It's, yeah, it, it's somewhat offensive and it's, it's somewhat insulting to black black people and black culture. Like, like we're we're special. What what kind of special Kool Aid did we drink that put us in an atmosphere or the, a position to actually win a championship? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, no Honestly, nobody ever black asked black the white black. coaches. They've you know, Dean Smith was coached maybe twenty years. some years before he won his first one, but he didn't get to ask that. You know, what Dean. What does it feel like to win your first one? You know what I mean? Like it's a different, it's a different added pressure, and that 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 does that shouldn't be that when it when it, in in our um in the vernacular, it shouldn't even be be like you said, it shouldn't even be a factor in yeah. the conversation, you know. But like you said, man, this this is something that he just we just know of because of what AI became on. But this another thing that was big to me was when it, he won the championship. Did like you said in 1984, but it was a game against uh. BC in 1989, where before the game starts, you know, it made me think about it the other night before when Milwaukee walked off the court. But he waited till the game got ready to start, the layup line and everything, and he walked off the court in protest of Prop 48. You know, and for you for you guys out there that don't know what Prop 48, like pretty much it was just like a dunce label back in those days there when we was coming out, where if you didn't have the certain grades or whatever the case may be. You couldn't play collegiate sports as a freshman. You had to sit out, and then you'll be labeled as Prop 48. So, in other words, you're walking around campus, everybody know, okay, that's a big dummy that's walking around here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, 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 and it was unfairly disproportionate toward brown people, you know, African Americans and, and the Latinos that were on these scholarships. So, he, he protested, like you said, that, that this, this is back before this was a thing. But I, I you can't help but to respect the man that's that strong in his convictions to say, you know what, I don't care about popularity. I don't care about how I may be penalized. I I'm going to do what's right in my eyes. I don't yeah. care about this money because that's how they get you. The number one thing they Absolutely. get you financially. If they feel like they have a whole they can get you financially, that's the first thing they're going to come for. And to have the, that conviction and that strength, and it wasn't that many black coaches at the time. Mm -hmm. And the reason why he was the first black coach to win it in 1984, because a lot of black men didn't get choices, getting chances to to to, to coach. So yeah. for him to be to be one of the few, and not and not to be scared to lose that position, it speaks monuments of his character and his mm -hmm. strength. He was to be unapologetic and speak your truth. It's it can cost you a lot, and he wasn't afraid of that cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, man, it's just a, it's just a, it's just a major loss in, in in the African community, African American community, not just in co in the college basketball world, because he was definitely more than just a coach. Like oh, he, new, he had the respect of um, the older generation and the younger generation, mm -hmm. utmost respect for him because they saw they saw when he went when he, when he went to um. They saw how he took care of his players and how he stood up for his players. Yeah. He made sure, he made sure that his players graduated the, from the last man on the bench. If you went to Georgetown, you wasn't one of them guys that graduated. He he was on your ass on the basketball court. He was on your ass about your grades. He didn't play around, and you could only respect him for that. Yeah. You could only respect him for that. And, 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 and it's funny that you went because I, I wanted to highlight that. During, during, his, during his college career, 97% of his players graduated with a degree. 97%. So you can say whatever you want to it as far as black people can't learn or they just did it for the sports. 
academically 97 percent <laughs> Let, let's let's put those, some of those academic numbers out there not not championships not coaches of the year but let's measure up some of these great coaches and see what their graduation rates is looking like and mm -hmm. i guarantee you that 97 percent is going to stick out especially <laughs> in this era where everybody won and done like Cap, done, you know bro. what i mean the last 15 20 years done kind of destroyed that whole graduation number so but like you said, during that era, man, that that was just like so monumental. And I I, I was watching um, I was watching uh Max Max Kellerman and Stephen A, who I can't stand, talk <laughs> about talk about it. And they were saying Matt, one of the things Max was saying, he admitted he was like, I didn't know him on a personal level, but he was talking about how he had met him at one of the uh, one of the March Madnesses, and it was like in the press conference, press room or whatever. He said, matter of fact, it was the same. It was the same day that. I think LeBron played in the All American game. That, that's what they were at. They were at the All American game. It was LeBron's All American game. He said LeBron lost that game, but that same day, I think LeBron had signed his Nike deal, still in high school, for like ninety million dollars with Nike, or whatever. And he said he remember him and John Com John Thompson having a conversation in passing, and he bringing that up to John Thompson. And he said without hesitation, the first thing that John Thompson said was, "Not hating on LeBron." But if they give LeBron James $90 million, they need to go ahead and give Kobe Bryant $200 million. That's true. And his whole, his whole thing was, which is the same thing that I was saying back then, you're paying this dude all this money based off of potential. This dude has never stepped on the NBA floor whatsoever and made $90 million. Where well, you have people like Kobe that done went out there and done paid a dude, so to speak. You know what I mean? So he was, he was more or less about not hating, like I said, not hating, but he wanted to see the, the players that he felt earn that respect, to yeah. earn that money, to earn that there to get them. And, they, and another thing that stood out to me was how they he, they said he called a team meeting because it was monumental. I seen Jim Beheim talking about this, how during that time, you know, he was monumental in the Big East becoming the Big East. Because let's keep it real. I'm a diehard Carolina fan, but you had Duke, North Carolina. But as far as college basketball in the 80s, oh, the everything was about the Big East. Everything. Hey, no, Nobody gonna... else matters but the big You know what I mean? But he said he called the meeting and he told him, he said, listen, we just signed this shoe deal with Nike. <laughs> right? He said, these are the shoes that we're going to be wearing whether you want them or not. And guess what? Ain't none of y'all getting paid. I'm the one that's getting paid. Like, this dude, this dude as a coach had a sneaker deal in the 80s. Like, that's like <laughs> unheard of, bro. <laughs> that's like, that's like unheard of. It's the fourth time. No, because they knew. They knew. They they went out on the streets and seen all these young black men wearing Hoya jackets. Just yeah. Just the number one selling jacket in the 80s in, in, in sports. Very like, marketable. Yeah, very marketable. So they knew, okay, well, his basketball team is selling these jackets, so we might as well just give them the other, you know, give them a sneaker deal too. two. I think I lost you for a second. No, nah, I just I stopped sharing my screen so you while you was talking, it would focus on you while you was talking. Oh, okay, okay, it's cool. Yeah, but like you said, man, it was he was he was so far ahead of his time. And then the last thing that I wanted to share on on uh Big John before we you know we wrap that segment of the show up was my favorite story was like to show you that he was like a man's man. We all know who Ray for Edmund was, you know what I mean? Like Ray Ray for Edmund was like the dude. He was like he 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 was the uh, Frank Lucas in the D.C. area in the 80s. Like, he was that dude. The D. came and automatic hands down. It wasn't even up for debate. And it was a story how Alonzo Mourning, and I heard Chris Moore, and I heard it on several different occasions, but my favorite was hearing Chris Wilborn talk about it because Chris said he in his early 20s, he a new reporter, and, you know, Big John called him, tell him, say, listen, man, you want the scoop? He said, Big John. You just finished hanging up with me at two o'clock in the morning. You know what I mean? It's seven o'clock in the morning. Why are you up already? He's like, <laughs> man, do you want the scoop or do you want some rest? So he said, get out of here. So he said he drove down to Georgetown University. He said, big when he got there, Big John was already sitting in the car. So Big John hears that, you know, Ray, Ray for all Edmund been approaching Alonzo Morning and a few of the players at Georgetown. And Big John, he goes looking for. Rafer, 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 like he he's oh, in his buddy. car, no no security, don't call no state troopers. You know what I mean? It's him and Wilborn 
in the car. Not Quiz Wilborn. Uh, what's my man? Yeah, Wilborn. So Mike Wilborn. So he yeah, said, uh, you know, they went to every barbershop. They went to all the parks. So, you know, the, eventually the word got out, got racked away for that, you know, Big John looking for you. You know what I'm saying? But just, just to have the gall, just to have the, you know what I mean? Because as these coaches, you know, you, we, as parents are trusting these kids to you, you know what I mean? So whether you, you plan on being a father figure, whether you want to be a role model or not, that's, that's what you're signing up for because I'm entrusting my child to you. So I'm expecting you to take care of my child the same that you would your own. And just the fact that he said, listen, I'm, I'm not going, I'm not dealing with a low level punk. I'm going to the top of the food chain and let this dude know this is like totally inappropriate because for one, and I'm quite, I'm quite sure it happened behind the scenes. I've never seen it documented, but dude, I'm a black man that's doing major things in a position that I am. And I'm not going to let you tear down my credibility. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what I'm saying? And, my players. And, and, and eventually he didn't find, they didn't find him that day. But word got to Rayford, and Rayford met him at Georgetown University and talked to him in the office, and they said they got – it went back and forth. He say, They say he tried to be cordial in the beginning, but Rayford was like, nah, they ain't, nothing, they ain't doing nothing illegal. And big, pretty much, I ain't going to say how he said it, but <laughs> in the clean version, bro, you're not hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> Leave my players alone, point blank, <laughs> period. You can't be friends. You can't be no nothing. Like, I don't even want you buying the jackets no more. Like, <laughs> I don't want you near the university whatsoever. Yeah, and they said Raven, he respected him so much that he let him be. Yeah, any, That's powerful, any, any man. With, with that type. Any 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 sports athlete that associate with, with even if he took pictures. I, th- I remember something like Carmelo Anthony had took a picture um, when he first got to the league. And it was like some drug dealer's that he took a picture where a guy wanted to be in a drug dealer in the neighborhood, but it was a video, Carmelo was just standing in the background. And that thing, whole thing got blown up. So he knew, he knew early on, like, even, even if my player's not doing nothing legal, if they even seen with you, that that's 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 the stain on the university and what yeah. I'm trying to do here. And I'm not gonna let you tear that down because I've been working too long at this. Yeah. Mm-mm. You know, and I and I I I can respect that. So big John, we gonna, we love you. We miss you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for sowing into our lives and thank you for, you know, all that you've done in the community and within the Georgetown family. So yeah. heartfelt shout out to his family as well as the Hoyer family. Um, all right. So I'm, I'm going to light it up a little bit. Like I, I, I was I was trying to get a female on the show tonight because I know you don't care about it. But I wanted to give at least at least give a shout out to Brandy and Monica. Last oh, night. Was last kinda, night? Yeah, it was, it was kind of historical, man. You know. People, people say what they want to. You know, they've been going with the back and forth all day. And listen, I mean, let me put this out there real quick, man. Y'all stop it, man. You know, black people, man, we 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 do enough hating on each other, man. Y'all need to stop that circulating the picture with Monica with the white shoes. Like, that's old now. You know? I mean, that one. Oh, let me find these shoes, man. Yeah, man, dude. It's like, because, like, from back, I think it was back in one of the videos back in the day, she had all these white shoes that looked like she was walking with Dr. King on Usher Board in 1968. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so everybody got the pictures up now with her with hat like she had the shoes on last night. But she had some smoking leather boots on last night. She was up the par. So like let's let's <laughs> cut it out, man. Yeah, yeah. She, she, and she she too. She Monica. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she easy on the eyes, bro. But Monica, Monica straight. And like I said in my post yesterday, she hood. Yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah. She, a, she a straight up body. She gonna ride with you. So I, I like that. But just straight vocally. I'm not talking about record sales. I'm not talking about looks. I'm not talking about that. None of that did. I'm talking about straight vocally. What you could do technically, what you could do with your voice. Right, yo. They don't Brandy, sing no more. Man, listen, man. <laughs> they, talk. they don't really sing no more. They, 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 but they, like this, I can remember, I can, I can vividly remember hearing both of their first songs for the first time. Like Monica. I want to be down. Yeah, like Monica was like, yo, that's yo, this chick right here, she we gotta watch out for her. But when I first heard I wanna be down, listen, the man. Remix. The, the remix. Man, the listen. Was okay. the remix that thing was life changing. <laughs> it was like, yo, who is this? Who is this in my ear? This is this is what the angels of heaven sound like. <laughs> like Brandy was just like on a whole nother level to me. So shout out to them last night. They got they broke. 
Right. Yeah, they, they got they got I think I wanted to say they got up to about 1.2 million views last night. So that was big for a versus. Yeah, they talked it up. It, it, it was talked up. I gotta check it. I gotta check it out. I gotta go back and check it. I didn't realize I, I saw yeah, it. Yeah, it, 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 it was good. It was pretty it went down. It went down. They, they so, they um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let I'm gonna let you take the floor on this head. What what how, I wanna know how you feel about the um the whole all right. So first first tell me how you feel about the whole protesting. Uh, for the Milwaukee game, and whether or not you feel like they, well, let's backtrack. Do first tell me if you think they should have been playing before all of that even started for it to even take place, and then you can go from the whole how you feel about the whole protest in Milwaukee with the Milwaukee bus walking off the court, or not even coming out actually, and then them resuming. Um, damn it, you know that whole thing seemed like it seemed like. A year, two, three years ago, this whole like the season started. <laughs> Seemed like such a long time, but that was an individual, an individual decision. And they came, they collectively decided, okay, we're gonna play. I'm like, okay, it's kind of strange, no fans. How y'all gonna do it with COVID-19? The the owners spent all that money, rented Disney World, got all that stuff, did all that stuff. I said, okay, all right. You know, they still they still gonna do their social justice thing. I understand some players didn't want to play. I remember Steven Jackson and um Matt Barnes and a couple other players, Kyrie Irving, was saying it's gonna distract from the movement, which 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 may be true, you know, but they they went and played. Now the other night, I can understand Milwaukee Bucks thing. And Milwaukee is one of the most segregated um country cities in the country. I think it is. It's like in, in, in all of the worst statistics for black life, they're in the top five or top 10 in home ownership, in poverty, in, in, in wealth, in, in um, getting locked up. They, 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 they sit up high. So I guess uh, what is it? Kenosha is, not, is, is a suburb of Milwaukee. So yeah. for them, that's close to home. So it's, it's about 40 miles, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's close to home. So. You know what? What you know? What I mean, after already suppressing some of your emotions and going along with the group and going out there and playing, now this happened, and you know you got in your mind. You think like other players saying, "Okay, we shouldn't even came here." And I'm quite sure it's real emotional. They said, "We're not going out there," and mm -hmm. I can understand that. Yeah. I can understand that. And then that led to the other players. Uh, from it's it's hard to tell because. I wasn't there. We wasn't mm -hmm. there. That whole thing was went on, but from 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 some from the reports I'm getting understanding, like I guess I think LeBron James and some other players were mad because they didn't get, um, they didn't know notification of it beforehand. Mm -hmm. But that that's a, that's the type of reaction that hits you immediately. You know, you sitting in that locker room, you're not thinking about basketball. You're thinking about damn. You know, he shot another one. He shot another one. He shot. Mm -hmm. Who shoots a man in the back seven times in front of his kids? You, 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 all you three young people in the back seat. I, I know. I think the oldest was like eight, nine, or something like that. Yeah, you know, he had a, a, a. It's, 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 mm, it's, it's. They, they, they shouldn't have protest the second time. I'm, or well, they shouldn't. Um, what they said it was that they were boycotting the second time. Yeah. They well, they, 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 they so, so they called it whatever, but. The league chose to not say that. They they just they they since since the first when they since Milwaukee, they they chose to use the term suspended play. But when, but the when play, initially was they was boycotting, which means they but, wasn't gonna play. Period. Okay, but th it happened so fast because the timeline yeah. is crazy. Because you know, I mean, I heard I heard like okay, oh the NBA players suspended. They they boycott. All right, then my son. Goes and order Domino's. The boycott ended before the pizza came. I said, what kind of, what kind of boycott is that? Who boycott for, 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 for five minutes or less? And we're like, why, why even boycott? That's not a boycott. It's more of an embarrassment. Like, you exactly you felt that strongly about it. Uh, and I understand that um, they said LeBron James reached out to Obama. I, I, I don't I don't really think that might have happened. I think the NBA owners might have reached out to Obama. And, and I don't know if you want to reach out with somebody to somebody about protests, reach out to John Thompson. They should reach out to John Thompson. Mm -hmm. He knows protests. We, we, we yeah. spoke on him. He knows protests. 
He knows mm-hmm. how to walk out and stand next to his conviction. You call yeah. Obama, and Obama probably got on the phone like, y'all niggas better get back to work. I got Dude, to and, 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 and then you, uh, yo, I'm, as, that's why we like, that's why we boy boys, because that's kind of where my, that's where my thoughts are, okay? Like, as soon as I heard about the, when I, because I was, um, I haven't been watching any games, period. I've been, like, just on my own boycott of the whole NBA because, me personally, I don't feel like they should be playing. You know what I mean? I feel like with this COVID thing, and I'm not super, super anti-fearful of COVID and all that there, but I'm at a point now where I, if it, if in a, in a Marvin's perfect world, that's in my perfect world, which will never exist, I feel like from now until the end of the year, only thing that any of us need to be focusing on is being with the ones that we love and figuring out our next move. Like, try, stop trying to be, stop trying to do both. Like, stop trying to do that and still be business as usual. You know what I mean? Like, we got to we gotta have a full out reset right about now. So I feel like, you know, and I understand that, you know, some just like some of them, even though they're millionaires, they living from check to check. That's on a different pay status. You know what I mean? So some of them, they couldn't afford it there. But like we talked about with John Thompson, bro, when, when does that, when do you compromise your, your beliefs or what you feel like you need to do versus your more what's morally right? You that's know, sometimes sacrifice. That's no, that's sacrifice. You have anything to, worth having is worth sacrifice, bro. Yeah, you have that's biblical, that's life. real life. You know, so like I, I just I just thought they was distorted on that there. And I even posted, I was so proud of them. I used the picture of my son with the protest. I was so proud, I'm proud of the NBA players, and like you say. Dude, almost before I get here, sin. They done talk about how they how they done had a meeting, and like you say, I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not going. Um, I'm not going to speculate. You know what yeah, I mean? I'm going to share my opinion. Like you said, neither one of us was there. Only thing I could go with is from the things that I've seen in the different reports. Now I did see the live footage of how things played out that night. So I believe that Milwaukee was playing. Who was it? Orlando. Orlando so like I kind of felt bad for Orlando. A little bit, a little wow. bit, because wow. they was already out there on the floor, warming up and ready. You know, you get your psychological on to play a game, and then it's like two minutes before the game start. Uh, guess what? Y'all go ahead back to the locker room. Ain't gonna be no game tonight. Okay. You know. So, and now having said that, Milwaukee, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. If that's the way you feel, and that's the way you guys vote as a team, yo, kudos to you. I love it. I respect it. But that happened. The very next game, while, okay, so while Milwaukee is supposed to be taking the floor and not, and the referees and them was getting ready to exit, the next game was again, was Houston and who Chris Paul played with now? OKC? OKC, yeah. So they playing next. So they showing them arriving at the arena as all this going on. So they saw Russell come in with his headphones on, listening to his music. He's doing his thing, getting ready. Strong with his warm up clothes on. Next thing you know, they show the hallway. Chris Paul, they show Chris Paul too when he gets to the stadium. Chris Paul never changed his clothes. He got on the same thing. He got he walked in the arena on, he looking like the president of the NBA, uh, the, the <laughs> Players Association, because he had the hat on, the shorts on, shirt like he ain't never changed. So you show they show him and um Russell going into this room. They have a meeting for about they talk to each other about 10, 15 minutes, come walking out laughing. Joking. Two minutes later, you see Russell going back to the bus with the clothes on that he came on. So by this time, it's done trickled out that there's gonna be no more game. Mm-hmm. So now they go from they 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 canceling the games for tonight to now is a full out protest. Now somewhere in between that protest, I mean the cancellation and the protest, all the players there in the bubble, the NBA governors and owners had a meeting. Now. I don't heard different accounts from this different meeting, but supposedly some have, I think, with, was it Patrick Beverly? One, one, some, somebody had an issue with some of the things that Le- LeBron was saying. Yeah, I, I heard like, that. I don't know what the hell LeBron was saying. I think Le- LeBron wouldn't want to win a championship. Yeah. He, he wants to win a championship. That, that's his goal. But, see, I I, I, I don't want to speculate. I, I don't want to kick, kick nobody back in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, and this, this, is, this is my thing. You ain't, I, I, you ain't got to worry about kicking nobody back in. I, I handle that. So... <laughs> You, like I said, there's the different reports. I right, he was talking to people. The younger players wasn't feeling the way he was talking to. Them. Yeah. All right. Now, supposedly, 
I did hear the same thing that a phone call was made to Barack. Whether Barack talked back to them or not, I don't know. But I Whoa. did hear I did hear MJ name come up too. So which is why I was listening to what you were saying because like if you're talking about protesting, why the hell would you call Michael Joy? I don't care if you consider no, him no, a case no. or not. They said they uh, for one 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 report I heard they said Michael jo Michael Jordan was his only black owner in the NBA. Mm -hmm. They said he was he was speaking up on behalf of the players. I don't know what side when they say behalf of the players. I don't know what they mean by that or behalf. So, you know, trying to trying to. So from my understanding of the reports and watching interviews, they took that as the owners. Of course, they in this secluded world. They they part of that one percent. You know what I mean. So it, they don't understand what the players going through. So supposedly, Mike, Mike being one of them, but a former player, was supposed to kind of help them understand some of the players' angst right now. First of all, Michael Jordan is removed from these. I don't care about him giving a hundred million dollars now and all this stuff that he's doing. I felt like he ain't do it like when it mattered. So you, you know. You can't convey the black experience in a meeting amongst one black man and a group of 28 other white men. Exactly. Yo, we too vast of a people. Yeah, so, and, the, and the stuff went on too long for you to... Some of the stuff you can't put in words is an, it's an experience that, 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 that you will never understand. That you so, will never, ever, ever understand. You can't, you will not be able to relate. You can sympathize, you can empathize, but you will never be able to fully relate. Yeah, you, want, yeah, you can't. You, you can't. You will never It's impossible. It. And Mike so, know, Mike Mike know if he if he put a fake mustache on and get some some Reebok, put some Reeboks on and walk up in the <laughs> doors, they'll follow his tall ass around. Uh -huh. I know it's him. Open Winfrey get locked out of stores. They they like close the door on her face lots of times. We don't know who she is. And yeah. those are those are people that's zero 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 point one percent. But when they see your black skin and they don't know who you are. They treat you like a regular, you know, like they, exactly. a regular black person sometimes. Yeah, you're not, you're not, yeah, exactly. You're not, you're not, you, you ain't, you're not one of them, mm -hmm. you know? So, but my thing was, first of all, the reason why I said I felt bad for Orlando a little bit is because, like I said, it's kind of unfair from that thing. But it ain't always what you do. Sometimes it's how you do it. You feel what I'm saying? I don't care if my feelings may hurt. My feelings may be hurt, and I may want to play. When you tell me, when I find out what happened to this young man in front of his children in your home state, and you make a conscious decision of a man to say, listen, I could care less about this check tonight. I could care, Listen, I'm not playing basketball because as an organization, I, man, do you know how powerful it would have been to me? And, 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 and I think the whole thing with them going on, with it, it bothers me because at the end of the day, they don't care about nothing else but money. That's all, all this is about is money. But you already, you're talking about billionaires. Who cares if you lose a couple more million, a couple oh, hundred million? You know, they, 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 yeah, they do. Exactly. They, we spent this, we, we, we spent this money on our investment and we want our return. Also, too, I heard that another reason that they might have came back early because I, I believe some of the owners might have threatened to uh to to reno get reno, re, renegotiate the um dead what is the 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 C, they, they, don't, they, they don't have a CBA that what is that they have the, yeah, the, the they, NBA Players Association is like with which Chris the Paul contract. is president of yeah they they want they want so supposedly they 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 was gonna try to do that so supposedly the only reason that they ended the so called protest or whatever because promises were made oh yeah 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 I see which is why I say why why I call total bull because, dude, there's a saying. I, I, I am so, I, and I don't even want to get into the politics because I know I'm going to do it so on politics the closer to the election. Lord have mercy. But I'm like so anti-Biden. I can't stand Trump, but I'm so anti-Biden <laughs> for the simple fact I've seen, I seen, I seen footage of him where he says, uh, he, he's talking about, and this, this is in the 77, 77 I want to say, 77 or 78. And they talking about uh, desegregating the schools, you know, integrating integration in the busing system. And he's talking about like, well, what's gonna happen when they start going to school with my children? I'm like, dude, who the hell is they? Like, <laughs> that's no, that's no, to me, that's no different than you people. You know what I mean? 
didn't his VP call him call him out on that in, in one of the debates? That's what took so long. I, I, I can't I can't confirm more than that because I ain't no, watched no. nothing. She said <laughs> I was one of those kids when she was in the debate. That's why it took so long for him to pick her. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah man, know. it's like, dude, are you serious? But one thing that he said is so true to me. Okay, when he was running for vice president with 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 uh. What was, what was what was Obama's whole thing? We can do it. I think it was. I think it was we can do it. Everything he had a saying that everybody was saying. I think it was we can do uh, it. Yes, we can. Yes, whatever. Time yeah, change, yeah. whatever, whatever it was. Biden whole thing was I vividly remember him saying something at one of the speeches that I actually did watch. He said something that stuck out to me because it sounded like something that a preacher would say. Sounds like a title of a, a sermon. But he kept saying it. He said, the more things change. The more things stay the same. But you 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 didn't hear him early. He had an interview not too long ago. And when they asked him, um, you know, the, the, his, what does the presidency want to be about? <laughs> he literally used to say what you just said. Nothing will fundamentally change. So I'm thinking, you know, that puts me back. So I know I go back to the Obama years. It wasn't that great. You know, that the housing, the, the, when, the, when, the, when the market crashed, black people lost almost 50% of their um of their wealth through through their homes. Obama didn't bail no homeowners out. So why would I want to go back to something like something nothing would fundamentally change? That's that's his projection for us in the in, in, for the future. He doesn't motivate. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have a plan for anything. Absolutely. Me, um, I went down to me and Ed went down to the um the march uh okay. last week in, in DC. How was it? It was deep. I listened to some of the speakers, but I didn't really go down there for that. You know, I knew, I knew um, when, when, when Reverend Al announced it, you know, it, it sort of morphed into something else. Mm -hmm. And my, you know, so I listened for a while. I watched it on TV. We watched some, some on the TV. It started real early. Like, they wanted to get them in and get them out of there. Out, it's like ASAP. It, it reminded me, it reminded me, it reminded me of a, um, a Kennedy speech. I mean, well, I mean, Malcolm, what Malcolm X was talking about, um, the original march. And and he said, uh, what was he saying? In effect, that that certain people, like uh, the, the the big white bosses, went to some of the black, the so-called black leaders, and was asking them, "What the hell is going on out here? What what are your people talking about? March on Washington, march on Washington." So you know, they 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 got with their guys, the the the, the black leaders that were selling some people out, got with their guys, said, you know, tell you know, they 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 kept certain speakers out, told them what time to arrive, which road to take. And what time to leave and get the hell up out of there? That's what it seemed like. It was like it was like I'm like eight o'clock in the morning. It's like fifteen people out there on the Capitol, and you got speakers coming. You know what I mean? Then it was so <laughs> you know what I mean? So we get there, and I'm like, you know, Ab, we really got a couple of signs. She had enough signs, but she just made another one. Said um, it was one sign that said they um, we put them first, they put us last. Um, Malcolm X said that in the Battle of the Bullet speech. So we that's on one side. And the other side said, no black agenda, no black vote. Flipping the sign. So we walk in, that sign, no black agenda, no black vote. Oh, that pissed a lot of people off. That pissed a lot of people. Yo, I was debating with people. <laughs> <laughs> I was debating with people. And I was getting the best of this guy. From the back of I me, mean, we're on the Capitol steps, right where everybody spoke at. They're gone now, but it's still about 300 people up there. And I'm debating this guy, and I'm giving, I'm giving them facts. I'm giving them, you know, I'm giving them stuff. I'm giving them point of view, but it's a discussion. And other people behind me heard, you know, heard me. They just started drowning me out. Shut up, shut up. I'm talking about 30 people just yelling, shut up, shut up. And, and the thing, <laughs> what, I, what I was trying to say to the brother was, okay, you're gonna vote for, you're gonna vote for Joe Biden. You, 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 you made your mind up. But at the same time, why don't you ask him what is his agenda for black people? Because if you wait till after the election, he's going to say, like, oh, you should have told me this stuff before. I don't have time now. I got to take care of the people that got me here. You just have to wait, you know, wait, wait four more years like mm -hmm. they always do. Like, I understand you got to get Trump out. He's sort of wacky. He, this is like the fifth episode, I mean, fifth, fifth season of, of The Apprentice that, that we're living in right now and shit. He's trying to fire everybody or set the country on fire, whatever one he's trying to do. But mm -hmm. it seemed like um, the DNC, this, 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 this is their mantra, just vote. Obama, just vote. Um, 
the news people got to get out there and vote. Everything, that, that, that was my issue. With, 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 they probably had 50 speakers, 50 speakers. I'm like, why every single speaker talking can, about voting? And they would vote, and you gotta vote. You gotta vote. Some yeah. speakers got up there, and all they did was talk about vote. I said, I ain't come in. I don't care about. And that wasn't what it was supposed to be based yeah, on. That's yeah. what that, that that that's why they was not that, that that wasn't the reason. Voting was not the reason that we was going to D.C. Yeah, we wasn't going down there. So don't beat us in the head now. This is not no voter registration uh, march. This is this is a march for Black Lives. That's what I want to hear about. Um, you know, it it was somewhat like a. Uh, it wasn't like the Million Man March. It didn't inspire me, you know. It, yeah. didn't, it, it didn't do anything like that. It left me, it left me. Um, I wouldn't say upset, but because a lot, a, a lot of black people that I saw, and it wasn't just that one guy. It was so many people coming up to me, wanted wanted to go at us. Oh, just vote, just vote. And I see that too. I hear that with like people talking to other family members. It's not an open discussion about it, but. Why can't you put pressure on this man and that whole Democratic Party, or they will just continue to take us take us for granted? What's they point blank period. Yeah, point blank period. That's all the Democratic Party has ever done. You know what I mean? Ooh, the evil white people. They racist. They can't stand you. So vote yeah. for us. But they yeah. don't care about us either. You, you see what I'm saying? Evil. Okay, yeah, we know that some of them are evil, racist, stuff like But what are you going to do for us? For for my for my understanding, I think that they say that the, the biggest voting block, a hundred million people. There's a hundred million people in America that don't vote. And people, you know, people look down on them and say they're stupid because they don't vote. But when you go in and talk to those people, the vast majority of them said we see no no future of voting for either party because nothing they're gonna do is gonna fundamentally change my life. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not no, no, both parties are not going to give me health care. They're not going to raise the minimum wage. They're not going to do anything for housing. So why should I vote for either party? I'm, I'm you know what I mean? I feel like a, a, a chump. And I, I don't want that for, for black people to for, for vote, vote for Joe Biden because it seems like the black enthusiasm is way up. And I understand that because we have, we have some black leadership that's coming from Michelle and Barack Obama. They're the two biggest. They they, they 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 control the Democratic Party right now. They have a big microphone for it, and they're mm -hmm. they 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 bringing enthusiasm for Black people. For my reaction at the, at the Capitol, I saw how 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 mad they was just because I was saying, "Yo, let's ask Joe Biden what he's going to give us." But they so enthused, and the energy is so loud, they so hot. But I don't want them to be played the fool the day after November fourth when it's time, you know, when other people are getting stuff. And we just sitting here like, thank you. And not even a thank you. When, mm -hmm. when he asked a multiplication about four or five times, when Charlemagne asked him, you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Cardi B asked him, Cardi B is not no, she's not <laughs> uh, Chris Hedges or some type of <laughs> top news reporter. She asked Cardi B. <laughs> he couldn't answer the question. Like you can't the answer the owner, the WAP owner. Huh? I said she Cardi B, the WAP owner. And you can't answer her questions. She's not trying to crack me on questions. She's asking questions that normal people will ask. Yeah. On four occasions, he, he changed the subject. Now, if you, uh, and, and most politicians, if you can't even lie to your constituents, <laughs> you got to change the subject anytime. That, that's a sign that he wants your vote, but this man ain't going to do nothing for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can lie. How many politicians come to the hood and lie to people? Vote for me, I'm gonna do this. Vote for me, I'm gonna do that. Vote for me, I'm gonna do it. And they don't do nothing. Okay, all right. Yeah, you want me? This dude can't even lie about it. That's and that's the sad <laughs> part. That, that's the sign. That's the sign because all politicians lie. He can't mm -hmm. even lie. He said, nah, I ain't. <laughs> it, ain't worth, like, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. And I, I won't lie because I, I I don't care. I, and I can care less what people think of me. My right is my right. You know what I mean? I've always been. One of those hundred thousand people, like I don't, I believe in the whole new world. I believe that's this is my right to believe that. I believe they already know who the next president gonna be. I feel, I feel like we vote wasting our time because all of that there is already proven. You go back to the Gore election when the popular vote, it, he won the popular vote, but then get the presidency. This been Hillary time after time. Thing. Yeah, the same, thing. same thing with Hillary. And, and the reason that people always, you know, people talk about, well, you gotta understand the. The popular vote and the electoral vote. Okay, I, okay. So let's let's break it down. The Constitution say that this is 
constitution. This is the constitution. They say that this land is for, for the people, by the people, which means that if anything, the popular vote should outweigh the electoral vote. But in my personal opinion, I feel like they put the, and it's been around forever. They, we just started oh, hearing oh. about a lady, but it, it, it's been around since the 1800s. Yeah. I feel like they incorporated this popular vote to say, you know what? We told y'all that we're going to give y'all the right to put us in the positions that you feel we need to be in so we can represent you guys. But just in case you dummies don't know how to vote, we're going to put this system into place so things can work out the way that we designed them to. You know what I mean? I think, was it, I think it was Karis Warren that said, you, you have to be educated to vote. You you really have to be educated to vote because, you know, the lies are out there, the trickery is out there. You, you, you really have to do your homework when you're voting or you would, this, this will continue. The black vote, black women are the backbone of the Democratic Party. The, 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 the strongest vote in black, most consistent vote in black of the, of the um, Democratic Party. Joe Biden, 1994 crime bill. What, what was it? He, he, he bragged about it when, 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 when he wrote it. And black women being the most strongest voting black in the Democratic Party, now he's going to turn around and ask these black women to vote for him. When he put their kids in jail for, for 25, 30 years, life even, for first-time offense. That woman that Trump just uh, pardoned. Yeah, the, uh, 21 years. Yeah, yeah, 21 yeah, yeah. years. A first-time offense. First-time first offense. But but the thing is, like, you know, and he was, he was, it was him that wrote those dispar dis disparaging laws, like, okay, five grams of crack, you get 25 years. But you need 500 grams of cocaine to get the same amount of time. <laughs> Knowing that black people can't afford 500 grams of cocaine, but they can, you know what I mean? They can get a couple of grams of crack. Dude, you know I mean? talked about that on one of the previous shows. Like, but people people, people, people want to say that we delusional, that this is that systematic racism isn't real. How is it that you need crack, you need cocaine to make crack? Yeah. But you get more time for having crack than cocaine. It ain't, it ain't that, it's, <laughs> it's just, it's common it's, sense. It's, it's like um, cocaine is like ninety nine percent of the ingredients <laughs> that make crack. <laughs> I don't want to say the formula. Right yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna give him. Yeah, I ain't gonna give him that. I'm just saying you can't do it without it. <laughs> it's the name, the name ingredient. Like, how is this possible? And judges and 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 it, 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 it was. He knew. He knew what he was when he was writing. It, it was just to just to put black men in jail and black yeah. women in. That's all it was, and and, and, and some of them did it. Some of them did it just to get votes. They used to use us to get votes. That that their, their, their favorite phrase back then when we were going up, tough on crime, tough on crime, and I and black people just heard. Now it was war up, crime. Up. That's all it was. What you just saying? Tough on crime, lock niggas up. That's all it was. That's the, the bill, and it, it, I believe it's starting to change a little bit now because they want to. Um, they starting to see. They starting to see that. The, first of all, the drugs, the jails are overcrowded, and and cities and states are getting well. States are getting bankrupt because they can't afford to house all these people no more, and it's costing so much money. What's it like? Um, some some for for once, let's say the average prisoner is like fifty thousand dollars a year that you got to take care of. Let me go to Harvard for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I could I could give me that. You know what I mean? I could buy in ten years. I might have like fifteen houses if they, if, you know what I mean. You give me that money on the side, something like that. But yeah. Mm -mm. He was he was just he, he used us in his election year and he bragged about it and he won't even apologize about it. And I say that to say this. Now he's gonna turn around and ask some black women to vote for him when you lock their children up for, for pretty much the same type of stuff that they were doing in the suburbs. They use just mm -hmm. as much drugs in the suburbs that they're doing it in the city. Absolutely. You know I mean? And and it's sad now too because the, the white brothers and sisters that's going through the um the opioid epidemic, you know, luck, lucky for them, Joe Biden is not writing no crime bill right now. You know what I mean? Because they will be getting locked up, but they're getting, they getting a the rehab, they're getting the help. But when our people's going through it, you know what I mean? They put us on the news, you know what I mean? Show us show us before, like, you know what I mean? It was like they, they will embarrass us on the news, show the worst of us, um, and use us in all types of crazy commercials and stuff like that just to, just to justify to the suburbs these people out of control 
and it's okay to lock lock them up in great numbers and stuff like that. Destroy black wealth, destroy black families, remove men out the community. You know, it's, it, it was it was it, it was his record, and people that's going to vote for him, I, please go go. That, voting is your personal decision, but I just want you to know who he is. So the letdown is not so bad. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's easy to fall off a, 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 a two steps off the ladder than you all the way up there thinking this man is so, you know, he's going to do something. Will he do something? I mean, I'm not only have my hopes up. Yeah. You know, I'm ready. I'm getting ready to go back down to Washington when they elect his ass. Hope, 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 hopefully I get into a bait with him. Mm -hmm. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, sad to say, this is my personal opinion. I'll go, I'll go ahead on the record before it, uh, it even go down. I ain't saying how I'm going to vote. But uh, for all these people that that's, that's pro Biden and we got to get rid of Trump, y'all might as well go ahead and hug each other again. Because I think even, no matter what it is, this dude is going to be back in the White House regardless. Ooh, like, I, I, yeah, absolutely. I tell people, just think about the, how he got in office now, bro. 2014, before the, the this dude was not even, he did not not even associate with the Republican Party. No, okay? you he used to get then all of a sudden, Democrat. he was a registered Democrat. <laughs> exactly. But then all of a sudden, when it's when it's time for them to put their names in the hat, why not? It ain't nothing but a celebrity contest anyway. Yeah, I might as well throw my name in the hat. So then it goes from not only him beating the top Republicans out there, he actually gets the nomination. So my thing is, when you if you remember doing doing the the the, the climate of this time. No Republican from Ron Paul, like all the ones that was major players, nobody was associating with him. Nobody. Oh, nobody. Nobody. No, 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 nobody. No. So my question is, how do you hijack a whole party? He's he's a he's a court leader. <laughs> and, and no, it exposed them. It exposed them. He he I think he called Ted Cruz's wife ugly. <laughs> and then, then, then he said Ted Cruz's father killed Kennedy. And if you see Ted Cruz now, yo, it's like he's walking behind Trump holding his coat when he like when he walk. It's, it's, it's sad. He just exposed them to show what they really are. All they care about is power or being around power or being around that group. That's all they are. He and did, he did, he did Cruz just like 50 did Ja Rule. It's like, <laughs> like he assassinated his whole character, bro. Like you was a you was a candidate too, bro. Like this dude hijacked the whole party, and next thing you know, he in the office. And dude, I'll be honest. I can't. I don't. I don't really critique him because I. I can honestly say I have never watched one of his speeches since he's been in there. I seen snippets when I'm in the stores and it might be on or something like that. There, but dude, just I thought we could get no worse than than Bush. Like that. That's when I really lost all hope because I. Th I thought Bush was gonna go down. I felt like when if if the world lived to go past another hundred years, I thought people was gonna look at history and say. How could America nominate, I mean, actually vote in this idiot in George W. Bush? I thought that was the lowest of low. That's, that's the Democrats. He that, is so educated party. compared to Trump. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm talking about, that, that's the Dem and, and, and the Democrats, um, Democrats help Trump get in. That's, that's from years and years of their bullshit-ass policies. You know, they say one thing, but they do another. Mm -hmm. after. All the jobs gone. It, it hurt. It helped uh, the. It hurt poor white folks. It hurt uh, poor black folks, middle class. It hurt everything because all those jobs went overseas. I pay somebody. They paying five dollars an hour to fix cars over there, and we charging. You know, what I mean, thirty dollars an hour. You know, over here to build the car. Yeah. And they shipped them overseas, and that that was a betrayal to pretty much America. And less tax. Yeah, less less tax too. But they were paying thirty five percent here versus eleven overseas. Yeah, so they lost. The Democrat used to be like the, the, the party of the working people before Clinton took over and they started, him and his wife started this neoliberalism, neoliberalism type thing they, that, that they call. I mm -hmm. just call it, I just call it selling people out pretty much. Matter of fact, selling sell, selling the people out to the corporate elites in Wall Street in the, in the, in the, in the business class. That's, that's all it basically is. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's, and, and I think they lost so many of those white people that pushed them to the Republican parties. And now them people just hate, de hate the Democratic Party so much. It seems more now that the Democratic Party is becoming the Republican Party, and the Republican Party is becoming the Donald Trump 
Donald Trump caught. Mm -hmm. It's just like it's it's no it's no party for the people that they really deal with party issues. Most of the issues are like um, identity politics. Um, let's say something like let's say uh, gay marriage or um, um, black and white issues or um, black and Latino issues. You know stuff stuff that don't yeah. that 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 matters. But it doesn't affect your everyday life, how you survive and, and, and prosper in this country. It, it doesn't affect any of that type of stuff. Now, they, they try to say, oh, Washington is, oh, the Democrats this, the Republicans that. All they, all they do is argue and they fight and vote. But if you really look at their record, when it's a tax cut, they pretty much support it. Anything got to do with the military gets through. They usually vote vote that, that, that help their constituents, not their constituents, I'm sorry, their donors. Yeah, they always take care of those people first. The so they, they really, they really do get along. And if you, they, they like you see these two people fighting, then the next day they're at his son's birthday party. And yeah, stuff. but you like that? These motherfuckers hate each other. Like, yeah, I, I thought they hate each other. Nah, it ain't like that with the blood of the crit. You know what I mean? You ain't. It ain't never going to be like that with the blood of the crit. Like you ain't going to never <laughs> see the back of <laughs> baby bar mitzvah. Like so, I don't understand how y'all could be so opposites. Like you said, y'all in the same circle. Yeah, every now and then they got K Day, so that's when it, that's when the Blood and Chris get along. Even the Blood <laughs> and Chris come together really and get along on some real stuff, and they got they got their K Day thing. But the, that that's just, it's just a farce. It's yeah. just a farce going on right now. But I'm glad that you're starting to see um, representative people people that come up through the ranks and and, and get in the Democratic Party, like Cory Bush, Jamar Bowman. I think uh, Cory Cory Bush. She 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 started um in the Ferguson protest, so she yeah I, I think Clay 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 and his father had that seat over there in Missouri for fifty years. He his father had it for like twenty five years. Like, I don't know how long he had it. He had like three somewhere like between three and five million dollars on his campaign. She had eight thousand dollars and she beat him. <laughs> <laughs> so 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 people people are starting to like. You know what I mean? People are supporting voices from their community, from the people. And I like to see mm -hmm. that on a local level like that, but it's it's a little bit different when you get higher us because the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, they don't want to hear new voices and they don't want people coming to Washington that really want to represent the people. They try to get, yeah. get rid of them as quick as possible. Absolutely. And, and like I said, I, I'm the, I am, even though I don't believe in voting, I am going to vote this year. I'm, I'm going to vote this year just simply out of respect for, you know, the life of Congress John Lewis. Like it was just something always about that dude too. Like I, out of respect for him, I'm I'm voting this shit. And 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 if nothing else, it's more or less like you said, those local assemblies, you know, yeah, around the local area. I could care less about the big wheels because I, I look at it like this. I look like look at it as like I'm walking into this room, right? And I only got two options. You know, ain't nobody else gonna see me, but because there ain't no cameras in here. But I only got two options. Either I'm going to take these three bullets or I'm going to get raped. I don't want to get raped or shot. <laughs> like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, real, like, real talk, like, for, for all these people that say, well, if you don't vote, then I don't want to hear no, you ain't got no right. Yo, you can kiss my behind. You got a right. You, you, got a right. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the same way you got a right to vote, I have a right not Two vote. <laughs> I, I got one, one conversation that I got to one of the people down there. The guy was saying, I asked him because I use this. He was, he was saying, uh, up there in Congress, when they vote, they can either vote yes, no, or, or, or abstain. You know what I mean? So hmm. that's, and that's still counted as a vote. You abstaining is still a vote. Even a no vote is a vote. Yeah. You know I mean? Gotcha. So, so, so they, they, they're going to say things and, you know, they, 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 they have talking points that that's fed down through the media and stuff like that, and they got people so emotional. That's the thing. When they tell you like that, like they be so emotional when they say it, like, like they was like, they was fed this thing, and if you don't vote, you you you're gonna kill all black people, and Trump gonna win, and then, but, you know, black people we survived the Middle Passage, survived slavery, Jim Crow, um, segregation, you know, all this stuff. We we. And we survived Trump for the last four years too. You know, we still here. So we 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 are survivors. So yeah. you don't have to fear, you know, you don't have to vote in fear, is what I'm trying to say. 
Yeah. Don't yeah. vote. Don't don't vote out of fear. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. Don't give Joe Biden a pass either because he doesn't deserve it. Mm -hmm. And and also, man, like it, it's time for us even to stop being taken advantage of from within because. Like you said, I, I mean, personally, I wasn't there, but I did tune in, like because I had, you know, I had a death in the family, where I had to move schedules around because we had a service a couple of weeks ago, and we we're gonna have another one there, so I couldn't afford to take the time off to come to the march, like I initially planned on doing, but um, I watched it online, and when I was watching it, like, I'm like, yo, this is his history, like I wanted to go because I knew it was gonna be historical. You know what I mean? But I was kind of, I ain't gonna lie, I was kind of worried with this whole COVID thing too. Cause I'm one of those anti-mask people. It, but, it didn't feel historical to me. And now, and see, that was my thing as I'm watching it, is I'm glad that you was there. You kind of talked about it early. Cause it, as I'm watching it, I'm feeling like, I felt like I was watching a production. Something that was <laughs> orchestrated based off of what they were saying that it was gonna be. You know, everybody on this timeline, like I said, everybody talking about voting. When you first, when, when Al Sharpton, I'm putting his name out there, when he first announced this march, it was supposed to be the mothers of all the families, of all the victims, and that's what it's going to be about. Getting some of your quality and the justice and bringing like to that there. They waited till the last 30 minutes to bring those families up to actually speak because, like you said, it was orchestrated and pushing this vote before that there. Then, hey, where she at? Come on. Hey, either she going to get up here now, we got to go. Cause we need to line. We need to be lining up. Hey, no, no. Hey, wait. Two minutes. Two minutes. That's it. Just two minutes. Like everything was like, yo, hold up. We supposed to be here showing compassion about these fault, these families that have lost loved ones. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, me and you, we were there at the Million Man March 25 years ago. We were there together. I can remember. I can remember being there, and we get antsy. Because we get there maybe like six, seven o'clock in the morning, and, and we and it's eleven o'clock before they even start. You know what I'm saying? It was it was the total opposite of what you saying that this was where everything felt rushed. It's you know what I mean? Eight o'clock in the morning, you got people speaking. I, I it was it was this uh, young rapper. I forgot. They said they walked from um they walked like 200, 200 and something miles, two hundred and something miles. The group they were saying like you know uh, I forgot. I don't know if he came from Wisconsin or not, but he he was on. You know, you walk 250 something miles, you speak for two minutes, and and that's it. And they put you on at 8 30 in the morning. You know what I mean? I walked all the time. And then it's like, and then when he, he he was speaking some stuff, and then he said, and make sure you go out there and vote. I'm like that, you know what I'm saying? He's a good speaker, so stuff. And then I'm like that. Did he have to say that? So I'm thinking to myself, like, did these people have to have to did they have to agree to say to, 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 to say go out and vote before they could speak? That's how I first, felt. The only um, what 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 is the young one from the squad uh, from Massachusetts? From where? I didn't hear anything um about voting? She she and that's that's uh, her uh, her speech was good. She's a great speaker, powerful speaker, and I apologize for not um saying her name. I got I got to look her name up. She's uh one of one of the women from the squad. Okay. Uh, she's the, she's the one who lost her hair. She 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 has a disease, but she lost her hair. Still beautiful. Right. Um, she she had a, she had a, a real powerful speech. Didn't have to mention voting or nothing, and it, and it reached me. That 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 was good. But the, I understand vote. I, I'm not telling people not to vote, but when it's re reiterated over the course of hours by every single speaker, I'm 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 saying why? It's so much more to talk about. It's so many more issues that we are dealing with. You know, you spend two seconds on um, black lives in a state of black condition, and then you say vote. But you don't say what the people go out there and vote for. You know what I mean? It's voting, it's, it's voting and it's voting for something. You got to give the people something to vote for to motivate them. And Joe Biden doesn't motivate. Trump is out there. Trump started last week. He's doing those big rallies again. His people are coming out. If Joe Biden doesn't rally, he couldn't he couldn't fill my backyard up with a bunch of people, man. He doesn't motivate anybody. There's no enthusiasm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, Michael Moore, Mike, you 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 say Trump was going to win again. Michael Moore picked Trump last time because he lives out there in Michigan. And he said he sees how Trump Trump supporters are, how excited they are, how motivated they are. And he picked Trump 
He said Trump is going to win an election against Hillary Clinton, and everybody shut him down. Said he was stupid. Yesterday, uh, yeah, two days ago, he said the same exact thing. He said um, Trump voters are really enthusiastic, enthusiastic, and is a good chance he's going to win again. Mm -hmm. So, and I, I saw another statistic today too. Trump support of, among Latinos is going. He's going to win thirty five percent of the Latino vote. That's up. <laughs> That's up. That's up for like, yo, know, seriously. That's I, I, um, that's crazy though. Yeah, it, it, it put because they, they they all rapists. And, he, and yeah, and he said they also said yeah they all rapists. They say Trump is gonna get forty five percent of the male Latino vote, and they all rapists. I, I don't I don't get it. I I, I know Latinos on, on on you know what I mean they all don't think the same and not they all don't vote yeah. together. But that's that's strange. I don't know. <laughs> and, and and it's actually his, his numbers went up between seven and ten percent among the Latino vote. So I don't, I don't know if that's going to stay through through the election because he's still locking them up. You know what I mean? They're still in detention camps all over the place. Families still separated. I don't know how it could go up like that. But I, and I'm, this I'm dude not, is still calling the coronavirus the China disease. Yeah, he just yeah, said it Sunday, bro. The Chinese like, virus. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's a reality like, show, yo. <laughs> anything, anything. The whole system, the whole he just he just exposed the system. Yeah, like, you can't yo, make this stuff up. You can't make it up, yeah. man. The apprentice. This is the apprentice, and he's 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 more he 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 the dem like I said before, the Democrats got him in. He's not the cause, he's a symptom, he's just a symptom. He's a symptom of bad, bad political policies for working people and, and poor people over the last 30, 40 years. It's, a continual, it's, it's, it's going to, it's, it's people that's worse that's, that's, you know, we could get somebody worse than Trump. Because mm -hmm. he's he's a little off. He, he's scared, he's more narcissistic than anything else. Oh, if absolutely. Get, huh? Yeah, that's if absolutely. Get, if we can get like a, a, a Lex Luthor type person up in there, somebody that's really smart and know how to really mess the system up and destroy stuff and really hurt people like that. Trump is just, you know, he's hard to read. He seems like he got sense, and he doesn't have sense, and he's he's this, he's that, but he is crazy. Absolutely yeah, crazy. To vote him out. Get him out of there. I'm, I'm with y'all. Get him out of there, but get something for getting him out of there. If Joe Biden, you know what I mean? If black people want to, if America want us, want black the black vote to help get him out of there, and the rest of the world do, does too, because he has he holds the strongest office in the land, you know? So we should get something for getting him out of there. Mm -hmm. Something. I mean, yeah. just Lie to the people, Joe. God damn. <laughs> I'm with you, man. Because, like I said, even, even even with all this push to vote, to me it just seemed like it's pop is popping up, and it is that time of year, but it's popping up in everywhere that don't say proper context, so to speak. Like you said, every speaker had to mention it. Did do you know how they do you know how they started the verses last night? Magic magically, old Camilla, she pops up on the screen. In front of them before they even start. Yeah, that's why we got to get out here and vote. <laughs> man, what's he doing up there with Brandy? And exactly. Well, this is yo. Exactly. Everybody know the importance of voting, or it's been discussed amongst ourselves, yo. This is not the platform for that, yo. She, she's supposed to be running for vice president. She don't have more important things to be doing than the checking in on the Brandy and Monica versus. Right. <laughs> she should be watching the Patty LaBelle, even the, the Patty LaBelle, like Aretha Franklin, even got wrestle. So that 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 one, that is, this ain't her, this ain't her era. She ain't gonna this era. <laughs> man, she got on that girl. Yeah, y'all both. Man, I said, man. Uh, they, yeah, they talk different when they talk to black people. Like, like, don't come on the black platforms with that stuff. Don't and that's what that's that. what I don't like. Yo, don't 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 play me like I'm stupid. Yeah, you know don't, what I'm saying? Don't us. You know, we don't, don't, don't tell me if I don't vote for you, I ain't really black. Especially being a white person. I feel offended if a black person say that. But <laughs> damn so if a white person tell me that, like, come on, bro. Yeah. I think come for on. myself. The dude, the dude, the dude can't talk, man. He can't. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how. I don't, it's going to be a surrogate. Because I don't know how he's going to motivate people to go out to the polls during COVID. And then you got Trump playing the game with the post office stuff like that. So how are you going to motivate these people to go out there and stand for you? And you know how you know and you know in the black cities, stand in line, stand in line for four or five hours in the rain, in the cold. 
you know, that, that's that's how black people got to vote. We got to vote in the rain, the cold, and wait for hours and hours. It'd be 15,000 people in two boat voting booths. That, that's how, nice you gonna, how you going to do it? And my pen is going to be real simple. He going to get his huggy bit on. Who's that? <laughs> Biden. He going to get his huggy bit on. Carmella, get out there and get my vote. No, Hit no, no. no, no, no. Like, no, no. He, 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 he going to use it. Obama, Obama, he used, Obama shames us in the vote. You know, he'll shame us and tell us that that silly commercial you got going on. If you don't like the way things are, then vote. We voted for you. We voted for you for <laughs> years. You never really stood up for, 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 you never really stood up for us. You know, his speeches, if you listen to his speeches in, in front of um, white crowds or his corporate donors, they're much different when he's talking to them in front of black crowds. Because most of the time, when he, when he speaks to all black audience um, when he was president, it was mostly like, and we black community, oh, we got to do better. Yeah, Obama, we know that. Um, we oh, get to see the brother side. Yeah, 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 yeah. He want to, he want to talk. He want to talk that. Oh, we got to do better. Oh, we got to do this. Y'all got to stop doing this. Y'all got to uh, turn the TV off. Y'all just well, white people have to do the same thing also. You know what I mean? This mm -hmm. is this is something that's universal. But you tongue lash us when you speak to us. You don't motivate. You don't tell us that. Okay, we just, just, just we need to work on this. Do this. And, you know what I mean? Build this wealth. Do like it's none of those type of speeches. You know what I mean? It, it was just tongue lashing and you know bashing. Uh, uh, you remember the incident with um on Princeton with, with, with Louis Gates? Yeah. When, when he was going to the house and the, and the cop and the cop um the cop you know rushed him up trying to lock him up going going to his own house and Obama said what? Only thing Obama said was uh, the cops should handle it different. All the outrage, all the police unions, all oh, he oh, this and that, all oh, he's the press, oh, he's bashing the play United States is bashing the cop, and then we we'll turn around. What happened? Mm -hmm. Obama got to sit down and have a beer with this motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Got to have a beer with this damn cop. Like now, say that to say this: this is the play United, the president of the United States, the most powerful man in the world. <laughs> I ain't this got to have a beer with nobody. Video. This cop is on video, um, roughing a black man out, um, violating his rights on his own porch, going to his house. And, and another thing, Gates and Obama are friends. So this is your friend he's doing this to. And now you got to turn around and sit down and have a beer with this guy. And, and the visual of it, they had to take video of it. The cops sitting there drinking a beer like, okay, you punk. I, I punked you, Obama. You know what I mean? <laughs> my, whiteness, my whiteness trumps you up your presidential, no matter how. I know, you know what I mean? It's looking like, you know, so it's looking like to me, like, oh, damn. No matter what office, how much power a black man think he has. I'm going to show man, you. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put you in your place. You know what I mean? You know, now, had he addressed that stuff back then, I'm not I'm not saying it's his fault. Mm -hmm. But some racial tension that's going on with the cops and the police and all this other type of stuff, maybe some of these brothers may be alive had he addressed it a little bit more back yeah. then. That was his chance. Mm -hmm. That was his chance. Cops and, and, and me, my I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not about to bash him, but I am not. I've never liked Obama for for various reasons. You know, everybody like, well, you know, that's the brother, man. Hey, man, I listen. I'm a brother. But I ain't. I, I call a spade a spade. You know what I mean? And even now, in the hindsight, I ain't even gonna go. On, I ain't even gonna go on the past issues. My thing was with the March Friday. You know, this this past weekend. What did he have to lose? You, you you can't run for presidency no more. You you mean to tell me if Obama had to show it up and did one of those little two minute spots about voting, it wouldn't have made a difference. Like if you really can't, like what do you have to lose on this anniversary of one of the most historical events in American history, and you are the only black president ever? Like you, he 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 is he's the only black president. And he's the second interracial president. So he, he's half white. We have to remember that. So, mm -hmm. I, so I'm not saying he ain't black, but he's 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 in a yeah 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 yeah. It's, it is a difference. I yeah. tell people, I, I I I me personally, I feel the same way. You know what I mean? Yeah. We have we have the first. We got an ethnic. We got an ethnic. Pre he was the first ethnic president, but until <laughs> you know what I mean, until we see Raheem Jackson in office, <laughs> you know, what I mean? with the fro, like. <laughs> that, that that's 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 gonna be the first official black. You should have had president. Jesse Jackson. That's my hey, you should have Jesse. Man, we gonna we gonna get ready to wrap up soon, man. But um, thanks thanks for doing this, man. I, I still appreciate it, man. 
And I apologize to you, to you viewers for getting this late start. All the technical technical difficulties with Zoom tonight. Zoom was really tripping on me. Um, but I found out it wasn't just my thing. It was a Zoom thing. So I do apologize for the delay. But as we wrap up, man, like, um, what you what you wanted to close out with, man? Um, I just close. Um, I'm gonna stick on the voting thing. It's election time. You know, the, the politics are all in our faces again. Um, all I'm just saying, my community, black community, poor people, poor white people, working class people, um, people of good faith. Don't let them take your vote for granted because they, they see it as taking you for granted. You go out there, you go out there and vote. It's your right. And for the people who ain't going to vote, that's your right too. But put the pressure on them. If you vote for them, be ready the day after election day to be in their face, on the phones, if you need to be on the phones, or in the streets. You got to put pressure on this man that first 100 days. Because after that first 100 days, it's almost impossible. You know what I mean? Don't make every excuse. Because I already heard from one of Joe, Joe Biden's um, top campaign managers talking that whispering at that mess oh well when he when 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 we get in there it may not be enough money to do anything because trump uh with the tax cut and all this other type stuff you know even though they just gave three trillion dollars to their friends you know so y'all go out there and vote do whatever you want but be ready to put the pressure on this man if he wins and if he doesn't win we just keep on fighting Cause Trump is Trump is crazy, you know. And it's a sex, it's sex, it's second. Um, if he if he does win again, we just prepare for. Be prepared to fight, you know what I mean. And even Biden win, be prepared to fight. And this uh, also too, it was a new party that's trying to to start. It started over the weekend called the Progressive Party, so we need to start looking at other parties too, because the Democrat Party is the new republic is becoming the new Republican Party. And the Republican Party is going far, far, far. I don't even know where they at, but they, you know, they, they're playing racial, the racial card, you know, black against white and all this other type of stuff. People stay strong, and I guess, like they said in the um, the march they went to vote, but vote <laughs> for something. Find out what you're voting for, yo. Find out what you're voting for. Absolutely, absolutely. Y'all yeah, be, be cool. All right, man. Like I said, I appreciate the time, man. We definitely going to do this again. Probably, matter, matter of fact, we, I'm going to probably just go ahead and put you on the books for the next Tuesday after the election. election <laughs> matter of fact, the election, ah, me, ah. election, gotta, election on Tuesdays, ain't it? You got you to put me before the election. This stuff, <laughs> we going we gonna, to we gonna do, we going to do it. We going to do it election night. Stuff, we, stuff is happening so rapidly, I guarantee you. The NBA players, they're going to strike again tomorrow. And they're going to be playing on Saturday. This stuff is happening so fast. This stuff is crazy, man. I can't keep up with it, yo. <laughs> well, right, right. I want to say, we're going we to do it in the next election. You're going to be the co-host on election night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> See if I can get do it all in a couple other politicians over here with us. Oh, we yeah. Just, well, you just make it a, a love fest. Huh? Do I win? I know you nah. won it. Are yeah, he, he was running, but I, I I think I think he withdrew before the race was over. He didn't win, but he said he's not done with politics either. No, he shouldn't be. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I, I definitely want to get him on on the show. Shot, hey, do it all, man. Listen, I'm trying to get you on, man. Whenever you're ready, I want you on, man. Cause like we proud of you, man. Going from hip hop to representing in the politics in, in in our community, Brick City, man. Big ups to you, bro. So we 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 always with you, man. You one of the true ones. I was a matter of fact, I was watching this live the other day. He was out there giving out computers to for the kids that was going back to school and stuff. Him, Trash, Red, you know, a couple of other local hip hop artists, man. So big up to them. I, and I forgot the name of it, but I want to say 211 is the name of their program. Oh, okay. um, so, you know, so support those, support those cats, man. And I'm trying to make a difference in our communities. You know what I mean? You can't, we can't, we can't, we can't have invoke change. From the outside, you know, we got to be in. So we can talk about how corrupt police are, but until some of us or some until some of our children become police to change the way they are, they way they do things, then we we never gonna see true change, you know. And I and I hit it on it, and I'm gonna close with that, you know. 
the reason I have brought up what Biden said about the more things change, the more they stay the same. That's very powerful. And I'm not, I'm not picking on Biden. I'm not even talking about Biden now. But when you hear statements like that, I need you to hear it loud and clear. And not only hear it, but understand what these people are saying. You know, I said that to say this. When we look at the protests, when we look at the NBA players, you know, from Colin Kaepernick to Roger Goodell giving his fake apology and still can't even say the man's name, you know, <laughs> the hypocrisy of people like Jerry Jones, you know, when when the first Nilla thing first went out there, he was the only first owner because I, I can't stand the Cowboys. He's the but, face of the owners. Exactly. For, for, for As a businessman, whether you like him or not, you got to respect Jerry Grind in, in the business world. Yeah, where so, you came from? How you got the yeah. name off that? So I was out, you know, I lived out there in Arkansas for eight years. So I, I know his background and who he is. Yeah, yeah. So when he went out there that, that first game, the first game of that season, and he out there taking a knee with his players. Before the game starts. Like, before the game starts. Before at no midfield, game. not on the sideline, yeah. at midfield yeah. for the pitchers and everything. I'm like, Dag, as much as I hate on this dude, I got to respect that. He riding with his players on this one here. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold up. Trump say something before, in the first quarter. The next week, if anybody get on a knee. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, the, the conversation switched so quick, bro, but you was out there on your knee too because you because at the end of the day, Either you were just doing it for publicity or you knew it had nothing to do with a flag. So no, my so point is, you know, the more the more things change, the more they stay the same. And until things are not the same, I don't care how much they change. And I say that when I'm talking about systematic racism, it doesn't matter what they talk about these new words or the Michael, Michael Jordan gave $100 million or the NBA say, listen, I'm committing $300 million to – police reform and making sure that they, their training is different and all that did. Guess what? That is change. But guess what? People are still dying in the streets. Yeah. Young men are still getting shot down in front of their children, yo. So it's all the same. I don't want to hear nothing about no change. All that change, all that talk, it sound good. But I want to see things not be the same no more. Mm. We, 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 we can look at it like the date pre-COVID and after COVID, because it seemed like they're trying to get us back to the same. Open up the economy, even though it's going to kill a lot of people. Like it's, and they don't care, man. Yeah. I get sick and tired of everybody talking about we need to go back to a lockdown. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it funky. In America, we have never been on a lockdown because, <laughs> dude, I, since since this whole COVID started, the first day of the the, the all the um actual orders I vividly remember was March sixteenth. March 16, 2020. That's when all these different orders went in, the curfews and everything else. My job did not shut down not one day since COVID started. It hasn't been. So I've been driving on Route 40 every single day, and I ain't never been out there by myself. So we if ain't never work, completely shut down. If you work at a gas station, you're a garbage man, you work at ShopRite. Uh, you ain't missed a day. You better not call out either. McDonald's. A funny story too. Somebody told me, like you, you, they call those, they they name those people essential workers. They had to work. McDonald's, hey, you gotta work. Mm -hmm. McDonald's, like uh, if you're an essential worker, you should be accommodated as an essential worker. You should be given more pay because you're risking your life being around all these people. McDonald's showed appreciation to their workers by giving them a pen. <laughs> not 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 a two dollar raise during this whole pandemic thing. But an ink pen. I'd have stabbed that. I'd have stabbed that. <laughs> Hell, to be honest with you, some of us ain't even get that. We just <laughs> yeah, report yeah, work. Man, we just, we just, we so conditioned, we just happy that we still got jobs. But yeah. we don't get nothing rewarded. And I ain't even going to get into the whole unemployment thing because I felt that was totally offensive. You know what I mean? Because it's like, here it is. Granted, people need money. But I'm just saying, dude, if you, only, if you was only making... $350 a week, right? At a full-time job. And that's probably that that's that's give that's being gracious. You're making $350 a week. Now all of a sudden you're getting that, you're getting 273 from unemployment, but you're getting a bonus $600 check. So you making more than you would like people came <laughs> over. 
like I said, I didn't miss a day at work. I ain't get none of those extra checks. I didn't get no, you know what I'm saying? So when tax gotta, return, when, when gotta, I'm gonna get broke off. You gotta be careful with that because that that was that was something that they knew the people was gonna support. But in that big bill, those corporations, yeah, they, yeah, they got they got I say like three quarters of that money of yeah. that three trillion dollars. And it, absolutely, is that the four trillion dollars? Because the because uh, some of those companies could use it for like to get you know zero percent interest loans. Mm -hmm. So I think that was just a farce. You know what I mean? They they, they played they played on the people, even though. It helped a lot of people out from getting eviction. I think Trump today too. I, I don't know this. Do a little off. He he. I think he put a moratorium on evictions for the end of the year, because I think a lot of people was about to because that 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 check ended. A lot of people was about to get evicted from their homes. Like you know. Yeah. So so. And he don't get no props for doing that either. Because no if you if you if you if all you gotta do is look at your research from the '80s. He was a slum lawyer himself. That's that's something the devil should. <laughs> The devil could have made that decision. That's that's something that's academic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because an election year, and, and you know, he just playing on election. It's mm -hmm. election year. You're going to have 60 million people being evicted before the election? He ain't know what he's doing. Yeah. He got, he, got, he got smart people around him. He just don't listen to him. <laughs> because he's terrifically great. He's wonderfully, perfectly great. He's the smartest great. person he ever met. <laughs> yeah, because me and my brother, we were talking the other day. To be honest with you, I would go as far as to say, and I know people disagree with me, but I don't. I would necessarily say that I'm not saying that he's not, but I don't necessarily consider Trump as a racist. I feel like if any anything that's not pro-Trump, he's against. Whether you black, whether you white, if it's not benefiting him, he could care less about you. That has nothing to do with your race, though. <laughs> Jeff Sessions was the first one to appoint him. I mean, to support him when he ran for president. Made him his attorney general. He didn't do the stuff Trump liked. Trump fired his behind. And then, <laughs> when he tried to run for Senate a little while ago, he supported the person against him. Shot like, instead of that. You're right, yeah. What, what you just said, if you ain't for him, he don't really care about yeah. you. Know he don't care nothing about that did, right or wrong, none of that did. He not oh, man. That, that, that's the definition of a narcissist. That's what he is. He's like a court leader. You know what I mean? If it don't, it don't. If, it's not, if it's good for me, you know, I want everything type stuff. Yeah. No doubt. So we're going to end it on that, man. Like you said, shout out to all the lives lost this week. Our prayers and our love and our hearts go out to the families and they with you. Man, we definitely going to miss you, Big John, though, man. You, you were, you were, you were the guy, you know, Cliff Robinson. Lute Olson and the other ones that we lost in uh actor, Chad great actor, Bo Chad with Bowman. He also I'm was not... a teacher. He also he he taught this, the, the Schomburg Center in Harlem for seven years. He taught acting. Oh he wow. Taught, yeah. He was a you know, so and his teachers, his, his students loved him. Not not and you talk, you hear some of his teachers, some of his students before he died, they loved him. So shout out to teachers too, because he was a great, he was a good teacher also. No doubt, no doubt. And with that, know that I love you guys. And as usual, DeAndre and Nisha, know that daddy loves you intentionally, but I also love you unconditionally. Till next week, one love. Peace. The move.